5% of the budgeted dollars that we get, the money that we're getting in from various revenue sources. Uh, and if you look at these different blocks, you'll see that we receive about 75% of our funding from the state, around $353 million. And that comes in through basic education apportionment. Basic education apportionment is how the state allocates resources to the district based on generally our enrollments. We also have local taxes, around 13% of our budget comes from local taxes of so $60 million is what we're planning on in our budget. Our federal dollars we receive for things like special education, high poverty student uh, impacts, English language learner impacts, career and technical, and other grants that we receive for federal dollars represents around 8% of our budget or $39 million. And then we have two other boxes off to the side that are on the bottom right there, around 3% of our budget. And those are for things like food sales, donations, grants, and other district revenues that we may receive from, from districts for, for receiving services of, for our students to attend their school. For their students to attend our schools, we receive some revenues for them. So as I indicated on the basic education apportionment, enrollment is our primary driver. And our enrollment that we're projecting for the 2019 year is 27,863 students. That doesn't include our preschool or our students continuing past the fourth year of high school. Uh, with all of those students, we're over 30,000 students in Tacoma Public Schools. When we look at our history of enrollments, we use a demographer to determine what our enrollment projections should be. Uh, we've had very stable enrollment. So over a 10-year period, we've only gained around 75 students in a 10-year period. So uh, we have different fluctuations from year to year. One year will be up, one year will be down, but overall, in the last 10 years, we've been relatively flat. Even over the next 10 years, we're only anticipating a student growth of around 857 students. This slide represents 100% of the expenditures. This is what we spend our money on. Uh, the three boxes to the left, certificated salaries, employee benefits, and payroll taxes, and classified salaries together represents about 83% of our budget. And we are a major employer here in Tacoma. We have a great responsibility with what we do, but most of our resources are spent on staffing and benefits for those staff. Contractual services, which are things like our transportation for general education, uh, the security resource officers that we have at many of our high schools, uh, software licensing, those activities are called contracted services, and we send in around 10% of our budget on those, around $48 million. We have supplies and materials. Those are, uh, as you can imagine, books, paper, materials that we need to operate a school. Cleaning supplies, paper towels, toilet paper, those sorts of things. Uh, around 6% of our budget is spent on those. And then on the very bottom right, you'll see two tiny little boxes that you can barely, barely see. That represents one half of 1% of our budget, and we use those for travel and uh, capital equipment. As I indicated, we are a major employer here in Tacoma. We employ more than 5,229 employees, but we only have a, an equivalent of 3,695 full-time staff members. So with that, we in the teacher category, teachers really represents more than just people in the classrooms. It's also people who are certificated, like counselors or some of our educational support service staff members. Uh, we have over 2,000 in the teacher category. And you can see the various other types of staffs that we employ. Uh, I think that it's important to note that we are the fifth largest employer here in Tacoma. So when we start talking about the deficit that I'm, you may have read about in the newspaper or heard about on the television, uh, there are really two things that drive our costs for the next year. One is a loss of revenue. We're going to receive a, a revenue loss, and that's based on current legislation, of around $30 million. I'll talk about those a little more in depth on the next slide. But the other thing is on a cost increases. Much like you have in your home budgets, you'll see that insurance goes up, rent goes up, uh, inflation is a natural part of what we do. We do have people who naturally move up on the salary schedule, that happens every year. We have cost inflation for utilities, gas, insurance, 
um, building repair and upkeep becomes more and more expensive every year. And then we have things like changing laws. Here in Tacoma, actually across the state, uh, we had a paid Family Medical Leave Act that passed, and so we have to pay a tax on that where we didn't have to pay that before. That's an impact that we have to address. And we have minimum wage here in Tacoma. Our minimum wage went from $12 to $12.35 per hour. And so those are the types of increases that happen. Whether um, we plan for them or not, we have to address them. We also have negotiated salary increases. Uh, which is common, we see those in every year. We did provide salary increases in the last several years, many years we've been going on salary increases, and legislative requirements that may impact our budget. An example of that would be the School Employees Benefit Board. The state has passed legislation that has an impact on us uh, where we will be providing benefits through the state as opposed to through our own benefit providers, but there's a cost increase to what we'll be utilizing through the state. So as I said, we'll get back to the revenue losses. This is a slide representing our revenue losses that we're anticipating for the 1920 year. If we start out in the 1819 year and go to the 1920 year, you'll see our revenue decline of $29.9 million. And that's really made up of two things. One is a loss in our levy of around $22 million of what we'll be able to collect. And the other is a one-time payment that we received from the state called Hold Harmless. Hold Harmless was given to us because they weren't able to address the levy issue in the prior year, and so they gave us a one-time allocation knowing that they would work on addressing that this year. So what happened to our levy? Uh, when, we, when the law changed after the McCleary, if you've ever heard of the McCleary lawsuit, the legislature implemented a new law that said you can collect either the $1.50 per thousand of assessed value or $2,500 per student, whichever is less. And for Tacoma, we qualify under the $1.50 rule. And that puts us in a position where we're only able to collect around $43 million of our levy dollars, where we used to be able to collect significantly more, more than 50% more than that. It is important to note that while we'll only be able to collect $43 million, our voters approved a $70 million levy in February of 20, 2018 at a rate of 64% approval rating. We are not able to access those the way the current law is written. So what that looks like, when we take our state dollars and our hold harmless dollars and our local effort assistance, local effort assistance is a subsidy that the state provides for property poor school districts, and compare those to what we would be getting. With the, the levy and the LEA, we were able to collect $97 million. And in 2019, in 2017-18, excuse me, in 2019-20, we will only be able to collect $43 million. And so you see that there was a step-down period. They took half the resources in one year and the other half in the next year. And as I indicated, that orange box is the one-time payment, the hold harmless dollars, uh, that the state provided us to try and, and help buffer against that loss. One of our fundamental issues with the levy loss outside of the revenue is the fact that it really is providing for an inequitable distribution of resources across the state. Uh, we find here in Tacoma that, and, and this is representative based off of data from 2018, late in 2018, uh, the, the district is only able to collect $1,300 per student here in Tacoma because we fall under the $1.50 classification. Other districts who are able to fall under the $2,500 per student can collect $2,500 per student. So we're finding that we can collect significantly more than some of our other local school districts that have far less challenges with lower free and reduced lunch percentages and who are also receiving some additional benefits from the state in having added salaries or, or other components to their revenues that we are not afforded. I think it's important to note, we are not the only school district experiencing problems. Uh, this slide is representative of those school districts who have announced a reduction in force, uh, as well as announcing other cuts and spending reductions. And I think that this is really uh, telling of the picture across the state, what you're seeing in the result of McCleary and, and the implementation of McCleary. With that, there are 235 school districts who will see a revenue decline in the coming year. 
So we are working hard to address our deficit here in Tacoma. We intend to spend our reserve balance down, that's our savings account essentially, down to our 5% reserve requirement. We have a limit in our policies that says we won't have a reserve less than 5% of our revenues. And we're anticipating that we'll have around $7.5 million more than that required reserve amount. And we will apply that towards next year's budget to try to offset any kind of losses. Additionally, we have made some adjustments to our staffing models, one being the staffing model for administration or the school support staffing model uh, that will save us around $4 million. And also, we will be optimizing our teacher model, which is just meaning that we have uh, collective bargaining agreement language, and we weren't currently staffing to our collective bargaining agreement language. We were a little richer, and we'll be bringing that up to the language. And that will provide us with around $4.3 million in savings. And we will use those to offset whatever legislative impacts that we end up having once the legislature is complete. So what's next for us? We're working to engage the public. We want to have these conversations with the public to understand what is important to you. Uh, we'll also be following all the legislative action. The legislature is set to end on April 28th, which is just a few short days away. And we're anticipating that they will end close to on time. If maybe a short social session is needed, then hopefully they will end within the next two to two and a half weeks. Uh, at that time, we'll have a better understanding of what the true impacts to the district are and what has to happen next uh, to identify uh, any resource issues. We'll continue with our strong financial management at the district, and we will uh, have a balanced budget, uh, which is required by state law, which we will probably adopt in August. We have been doing a number of community outreach uh, impacts similar to this, and we've been doing some surveying, and we also have a budget committee that has been working on identifying ways that we can do uh, things better here in the district. So we are, are welcoming and inviting these conversations, and that is why we are ready to hear from you. Thank you for your time. about this one? Good. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for being here. Appreciate you taking the time to come out. We're really interested in hearing from you. Uh, you can see based on that report, uh, we have some tough decisions ahead of us. Uh, none of this is going to be easy, but we're in it together. And uh, your input is vitally important to us up here collectively uh, when we have to make some final decisions. We'll move on to public comment. Do we have cards or are we inviting? Okay. Uh, school board members encourage public participation. Your civil input is appreciated. If you would like to address the school board, follow these steps. Complete a citizen's request to speak card. Submit the card to the school board secretary prior to the start of the meeting. Cards submitted after the public comment period has ended will not be considered at this session. The superintendent will call your name when it is your turn to address the school board. Please speak into the microphone. You may have up to three minutes to share your comments. If there are a large number of speakers, time may be limited. Uh, yeah, I think we're okay on time, so you'll be allotted the full three minutes. And with that, who's our first speaker? First, uh, first speaker is Holly Stewart, followed by Meredith Cox. Uh, my name is Holly Stewart. I am a Tacoma voter and a parent to a first grader in the district. And I want to urge you to prioritize three focus areas in your upcoming budget decisions. The first is equity. I want to thank board member Cobb for her comments at the last school board meeting about equity in regards to the district's disciplinary actions and suspensions. Thank you for digging into the numbers rather than just rubber stamping the report. I encourage you to view all of your upcoming budget decisions through an equity lens. As you decide where and what may be cut, you must thoroughly consider the effects this may have for students of color, low-income students, and all neighborhoods in the district. If you decide to cut a certain percentage across the board from all schools and programs, it may disproportionately affect vulnerable student populations and their ability to learn and succeed. 
For example, cuts to food services, family service coordinators, counselors, nurses, crossing guards, and other specialists should be evaluated through this perspective. Equity is also a critical component of professional development for all staff and teachers. The second is professional development. I understand that training budgets have already been cut for certain areas. Teachers, however, do have professional development requirements in their contracts, and the district provides many types of trainings in-house. Instead of focusing on professional development for just technology and test scores, I want to encourage the district to bring other trainings in-house. When teachers are exposed to innovative educational models and pedagogies, they are better equipped to meet your goal of connecting students to their passions and keeping them engaged in learning. This is especially relevant as the district needs to build a long-term strategy for having qualified educators who can step in to fill vacancies at your innovative Montessori and IB schools. Provide time for teachers to cross-train and observe the classroom of veteran teachers who can give them hands-on training in your innovative models. The third aspect is building trust with communication and transparency. The school board and district administration must prioritize building trust with parents, teachers, and students in your decision-making processes. I commend you for holding these budget work sessions and trying to collect public comments. An intimidating open microphone, however, will not build relationships. Please take the time to get to know your parents, teachers, and students that you serve. You can do this by visiting classrooms and school events, making your decisions in a fully transparent manner, and formatting public meetings in a way that invites genuine conversation. The principal at Bryant recently held an open forum for parents to come after school and talk about the budget possibilities and what that might mean for our school. Every school should be having the same conversation. Get in front of it. Public engagement isn't just a box to check. Truly engaged dialogue builds trust, leads to better decision making, and fewer angry constituents when you have to make these difficult decisions. Thank you. Meredith Hawk, followed by Alex Stillman. Hello. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. My name is Meredith Hawk, and I am the teacher librarian at McCarver and Fernhill Elementary Schools, which means my students don't have access to information and resources daily. I'm encouraging you to consider not solving our budget problems by cutting library programs. Our students deserve equitable daily access to the library. In a 2015 study, Elizabeth Coker found that Washington students who were taught by a certificated teacher librarian performed better on standardized tests and had higher graduation rates. In a Wisconsin study, Esther Smith found that full-time teacher librarians led to increased student achievement in all grades. Our goals in the district are to increase student achievement and the graduation rate, and access to quality library programs have been proven to directly impact both of those areas. Yet, less than half of our elementary schools are open every, have libraries that are open every day. Uh, we say every student every day, and it's time that we extend that motto to our libraries. Thank you. Alex Stillman, followed by Kristen Sierra. Pardon? Alex? Alex Still Stillman. That's you. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you for your time. My name is Alex Stillman. I'm a school nurse in Tacoma Public Schools. Uh, right now I'm in charge of two middle schools, but I'm also covering a third middle school as I teach um, a new school nurse um, her way around the district. I'm currently mentoring two uh, school nurses as well as I'm a department co-chair. Um, the reason I list all of those credentials is as I've been in the district for eight years, uh, my workload has just increased and increased. Enrollment has stayed stable. Uh, nursing FTE has remained fairly stable, but student health concerns have only increased. Uh, we're seeing kids with more diabetes, more anaphylaxis, asthma, ADHD, um, and unfortunately it's getting harder and harder to keep up. Um, we know, given this um, situation that we've unfortunately had put on our plates, um, that you know cuts will probably need to be made, but we ask that you prioritize student health and realize that of the school nurses that we are able to retain, if we um, lose many more and our case loads, case loads get much higher, uh, we risk losing 
even more, and, and that's just something we can't have happen. Um, school nurses not only keep students in the classroom, um, but we improve staff efficiency, we reduce 911 calls, uh, we prevent unnecessary ER and urgent care visits, uh, we connect family with medical resources and help students see providers when they haven't for years. Uh, we not only save the district money, but we also save the community um, money through our work. We know that things are stretched thin, but we hope that you make student health and safety a priority and don't look at cutting health services. Um, just one area in which I don't know has been considered for budget cuts, I'm just thinking of my own family, the first thing to kind of go out the window is trips, personal things like that, and so looking at maybe field trips um, and personal things like that, I'd love our students to have those opportunities, but if we have to let field trips and, and things like that go, I just know as the nurse, um, I've had um, 16 field trips this month alone between my two buildings. So thank you for your time. Kristen Sierra. Good evening. Dear school board members and Superintendent Santorno and all the Abes in the building. Um, thank you for this opportunity to speak up for a huge piece of equity and access in our schools across um, access to a school library and a full-time certified librarian. Intellectual freedom is the key to a sound education. A library collection that challenges and fits the needs of students with a certified full-time teacher librarian to empower readers and teachers and lead information literacy, research, and digital and print resource management in our schools. I've only just begun, uh, but we know that research shows when there is access, choice, opportunity, and guidance, students will read, and reading equals higher scores and achievement. Just last week, as several people in this very room can attest, including uh, Ms. Winslow, um, we had approximately 150 people, students, parents, community members, celebrating the reading accomplishment and teamwork of our middle school students. This is just one powerful example of a dynamic program, one that gets hundreds of students to read that would die without the work of our teacher librarians. On a grander scale, it's proven that in, in schools with a certified teacher librarian, that students have higher overall achievement, higher reading scores, higher attendance rates, better technology skills, and a greater readiness for college and careers. I think and I hope that I'm preaching to the choir tonight. However, it needs to be said being that two of the three largest districts in our state have decided to cut or maim their library programs and the position of teacher librarians. I consider this cause for speaking up now before it happens in Tacoma. Two of our best and brightest teachers here in this building, Hope and Nate Boeing, are leaving our district in public education. This is happening for several reasons, but one reason that was given was because of the impossible workload on teachers' shoulders today, particularly at our schools of greater needs. Spokane has decided that their classroom teachers don't have enough um, to do, that they are now absorbing the duties of the school librarian from being up on all the new books, teacher um, digital literacy, information literacy, knowing how to guide readers and what to recommend to every single student, curate the library collection, and reflect students' interests in current curriculum and every content. Teach databases and research and meet every student where they are at reading. To that, I say, good luck with that, Spokane. <laughs> Students and teachers are going to suffer there. And when it comes to decision making, and I know you have some tough choices to make, um, please choose to protect the very heart of every school, the library and the professionals that keep that heart beating, the teacher librarians of Tacoma Public Schools. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, is there anybody else in the audience who had not filled out a card but is now inspired to come up and share? All right, I'll give you a chance in a few minutes, but I'll turn to my colleagues. Is there anybody on the board that has questions or comments? Director Cobb. Well, I'll just offer a comment. I don't want to be too pushy, but it's great when we have students in the room. So if any students need an extra bit of encouragement to share some of the things that you 
find most valuable in your experience just so that we have that perspective it's really great and I appreciate having staff here tonight the teacher li like the librarians the nurses it's great to hear from you I really appreciate it so students too, the other like our main customer if any of you want to say anything I strongly encourage you to share it's great to hear your perspective you are the reason why we're all up here so it's great to hear from you and just more broadly I would say that this is a lot of information that was offered in the overview presentation that Miss Medina gave so if there's any um, parts of it that were confusing any words that were used that you don't understand any further clarification that you want about some of those topics please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us it's a lot again of information a lot of details the levy and the general apportionment all these things are big so please um, I encourage you all to follow up with questions or comments after we're all wrapped up director Neil yep. can you hear me yes um, so I'd like to just um, add on to the comments of our speaker here about uh, healthcare. Uh, that's uh, the field I work in. I work with a lot of school teachers, um, I mean, excuse me, school nurses when I'm uh, at my regular job interacting with them. So I really appreciate the hard work that they're doing. And it's the front lines of keeping a lot of kids healthy, as you said, and keeping them in school and learning. We just uh, opened the um, in-school uh, cl health clinic at Oakland uh, this month. And that is a, another way to help our students. But that is, uh, the nurses is really the first, the first line um, and do most of the work and the important work to keep kids safe. So um, I think we'll have these conversations as a, as a group up here to see what, uh, what can be saved. But I'd like to see um, that continue to be strong. Director Winscombe. So I'd just like to say that um, I have talked to the superintendent and the deputy superintendent about uh, budget and they assure me that no decisions have been made behind my back or behind anyone else's back <laughs> at this point so um, we all have special programs th programs that are special to us we all understand what works um, what the students really um, like I've always been a fan of the libraries all my life I go to library public library every single Saturday and I have for 30 years um, and uh, also I recognize how important the nurses are, especially, you know, I was talking to one of the high school uh, nurses, not only do they deal with the medical issues, uh, the, you know, asthma and diabetes and those major issues, but mental health is becoming increasingly um, part of the job. So um, I think all of us recognize how important nurses are. So um, any decisions I make are gonna be I hope away from the classroom as much as possible, and uh, we'll just have to see what happens with the legislature. We don't know. Thank you, and I would add to the comment, it does take a lot of uh, courage to stand up at the open mic, and so uh, please do reach out to us. Uh, if you go onto the website, there's an easy email, all the board button to hit. That also goes to the superintendent and uh, some of her cabinet members is a great way to provide, uh, ask us questions, uh, express concerns, provide suggestions, and, um, and I appreciated uh, Ms. Stillman uh, giving us a thought around what to cut. Because for me, part of the challenge um, of this interaction that we've had is it is people standing up that feel very passionate about specific programs. Don't cut this, don't cut this, don't cut this, and my don't cut list now is this long, and you heard, uh, Mrs. Medina give us the state of the union on our finances and inevitably we are going to have to cut. And so if you through this public forum, through the email or other channels provide us with some suggestions um, and I hope that you feel the tension of well, I don't, I can't come up with anything to cut because that's, that's the challenge that we face as well that uh, really there isn't, I tell people that we have trimmed the fat, we're now trying to determine what vital organs can we not live without. And um, administrative cuts, we continue to, uh, this board directs the superintendent to make certain that we're running lean and mean at the top, uh, but there's 43 positions that have already been eliminated through the first round of budget cuts to get us back on a bu balanced budget for this year. So with specificity, if you could provide some thoughts around what to cut, um, I would appreciate it, I know my colleagues would appreciate it. 
Uh, before we conclude, is there anybody else that, oh, all right, young lady. Would you like to use this one right here? Um, it's just, it's not just um, research. I really like, I really like other stories too, like nonfiction. And um, I like um, that they do makerspace in the library. And um, they don't do makerspace anywhere else. And um, Craft Corner too, and you get to just code in there and uh, do crafts. And, and that's all. Thank you. Compliment Gabby. Gabby is one of my students. I'm a librarian at Washington. She's a hard act to follow. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Erin Bethel, and I'm a teacher librarian media specialist at Washington Elementary. I wasn't prepared to speak, um, but I felt moved. Um, one thing that really spoke to me was the comment about vital organs. The libraries aren't just additional things. The library is the heart. And we are trying desperately to create an environment where every child is welcome. Every child feels safe. I'm thinking about diversity, I'm thinking about equity, I'm thinking about access. And we have really strived to make Washington Elementary a place where every child, every family feels like it is a safe haven and a place where they can come learn, explore, be themselves. And while Gabby mentioned how much she loves crafting, we craft every Monday, craft corner, knitting. She knows how to cast on now, which is amazing. But it's not just the additional programming. I'm only there 0.8. And within that, I teach 18 classes. I see eight different groups for Makerspace. Um, our superintendent visited a, a program I put on last Friday, Global Reading Challenge, which we're trying to bring to Tacoma. Um, but I really think about, again, that vital organ, and I urge you, while I can't think of anything that I want to cut either, I tend to think half full, positive, what we can keep. And the libraries are integral and important and part of every child's life. We see every single kit. So thank you for your consideration, and I look forward to hearing more comments and communicating with you in the future. And thank you, Gabby and Diego. Superintendent, any closing comments? Director Cobb, did you want to lead us in the Abe fight song before we, before on we go? On with Lincoln, on with Lincoln. <laughs> I have lots of memories in this place. Proud Lincoln Abe, class of 2000. Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you all very much. We appreciate your attendance. Have a good evening.